All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are gonna talk about one of the best tasting figs I grow, if I'm being totally honest with you guys. It's called Paradiso. And this one is um, Paradiso from Bode, a French grower. Probably the most respected French grower when it comes to fig trees. Um, and, you know, there's many different uh, figs with the same name, Paradiso. So that's why I wanted to clarify that, that it is from Bode. Um, and as I said, we've talked about in other videos that I have other figs by the name of Paradiso. There's a Paradiso Jean, there's a Paradiso Giovanni, there's a Paradiso from Ciro, there's a Paradiso from Bode. And across the board, a lot of the Paradisos, believe it or not, that I've tried end up being very, very tasty figs. The Paradiso from Ciro is definitely one of the best tasting figs I grow. And so is this. What is odd, oddly strange about um, this particular fig and all the Paradisos I've grown is that they're all very different from each other, yet they have a, a greener skin or a yellow skin on the outside, typically green, and then a, a red interior. Um, and I think what really is supposed to be, I guess what people were going for when they named them Paradiso is that it's their paradise, right? It's their own version of paradise. Figs are a version of paradise, that's for sure. Um, just growing food in general is such a form of paradise, in my opinion. Um, and the other thoughts that people might have had, and I, I can't speak for everybody that's named their fig Paradiso, but someone may have the opinion of, oh, well, this fig is called Paradiso because this is the Paradiso that was depicted in Galicio's drawings, which are, you know, photos and written um, information about a number of different Italian varieties of not just figs, but of other different types of fruits uh, that were in Italy and that were popular in Italy. So they're in Galicio's drawings is a, uh, a fig. If you look through it, through his manuscript, you will find a fig called Paradiso. And I don't believe that that this particular fig is that Paradiso. So this one was named Paradiso for other reasons. Um, or at least it's not because of the, uh, the drawings, or at least it shouldn't be because of the drawings. So, this one here, in my opinion, as I've said, is just, I've talked about this in many other videos, it really is one of the tastiest figs, and I would argue that if you live in a really warm and dry climate, particularly on the dry side, if you just have a drier climate, you should grow this fig. Um, it does need a little bit longer of a season, but it's not really that much, it's not that late. You know, it's probably like um, somewhere on the end of mid-season or at the beginning of, uh, of late. So this can be grown in a wide variety of climates, but particularly I would highly recommend, again, that you grow this fig in a dry place because it really does tend to split a lot. And so far, pretty much every fig off of this tree, I've probably harvested close to 15 fruits maybe, and they've all split. And even when it's not even wet, as it hasn't been lately, and that's why I'm finally getting around to do a review of this particular fig, because it finally hasn't been wet. There hasn't been a lot of rain and therefore the fruits are ripening to their full potential. But typically what you'll see is that they'll split and they have a, even just a large eye in general. So this is not really a fig for people in human places. It really just is not. Um, it's a shame because it really is an extremely tasty fig. And I bet if it was, you know, grown in California and caprified and just had the right climate, had the right treatment. I mean, this would be such an amazing fig for somebody out there that lives in these dry places that I would argue this will probably, it is gonna be in there, you know, among the tastiest figs that they grow without a doubt. Um, it's just that good. And I also say that, by the way, in terms of its production, I've had it for a number of years, but it is grafted. It does seem to be quite healthy. It does seem to be uh, higher on the vigor. 
and it also seems to be quite productive. So it's got a lot of traits going for it. Pretty much everything's there except for the splitting and the opening of the eye, you know, just having a open eye. Um, you know, I've been really careful about watering it too. It's not like, um, you know, uh, I've been over watering it or something. This has been for numerous years that it just tends to split a lot. Um, I even have a fruit down here. Is this also Paradiso? I think it is. So this one here came right off. It doesn't look like, yeah, this one's fermented. So it's kind of just what you have to deal with. If you're going to, if you want to grow this in a humid place, you know, I don't really recommend it, but if you wanted to experience this amazing fig, I mean, and you live in a humid place, it just is what it is. You got to put up with this and Although I've harvested roughly 15, this is really the first one that's going to be any decent. Um, so I would argue, truthfully, that if you live in a humid place, about 5% of the crop will actually ripen for you and be of that amazing flavor and texture that I am talking about in this video. Let's try it. Oh yeah. It's very sweet, very juicy very thick, very jammy, and the berry flavor is there. Tastes a lot like a strawberry, a pretty intense strawberry. It's just very good. And what I've noticed about this fruit in other years that really makes it, by my standards, even better is the texture. The texture is really quite thick, really impressive, like a col de Nam. It's very thick. So for me, like I said, it's just up there with the Colden knobs. It's up there with, uh, you know, Smith. Um, it's just seriously, De La Roca, it's really one of the best tasting fruits that I've ever grown. And it's consistent. The problem is it's like Black Madeira in that here in my humid climate, most of them split. I only get to harvest about 5% of the crop. So... It's up to you. Do you want to do that? Maybe you have other methods. You have a way of protecting it from the rain. Uh, you have a drier location. You could put it in, whatever. But I'll tell you 100% that this fig will blow people's minds uh, in a dry place. This is a, in terms of flavor, I know we talked a lot about recently and a lot of the figs we talk about are just about the performance here in this climate, but this one really is top of the, the, the class in terms of flavor. So that's it guys, that's Paradiso from Bode. And you can see some of the other Paradiso figs we've done or videos we've done on other varieties if you're interested. We did, we talked about the Ciro version last year. That's a very impressive fruit as well. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon. Check out our blog and other videos that we've done. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys soon. We'll catch you for the next one, all right? Take care.